In this uh, second tutorial of the Yellow project, we will show how to take a character that we created in Blender uh, as shown in the previous tutorial. And uh, here we will show how to import this character in Unity and make it interactive using the Yella Unity package. So first you create a new project. Here I call this project Yella Tutorial 2, a 3D template, create a project. First thing you do is to import package and you select the package that you find in the Yella SDK. Here is the list of files. You import everything and it will create a folder called Yalla in your uh, assets folder. The package contains already a couple of Blender characters, uh, so it will take a while to import. But uh, in this tutorial we will show how to use the freshly created character. Once you import, you see the Yala folder and the script folder where we will take all the scripts needed to animate our character. Next step, we create a folder where we will copy uh, the character we created during the previous tutorial. We give to this folder the same name of the Blender scene that we are going to copy there. And then we go to the Asset menu import new asset and we go to select the blender scene that we saved from the previous tutorial tanya.blend and again we have to wait a bit for unity to import the blender scene once import we see the character in the inspector we see the importing options and now I will show you uh, how to edit this import option to have the character correctly working. So first in the in the first tab you have to change in the normal setting. Instead of import you have to recalculate it because uh, sometimes there are problems in the area of the face when you leave uh, uh, when you import the normals from uh, Blender while if Unity computes them, uh, the problem is solved. Second, you move to the Rig tab and you have to set the root node of the animation. So instead of uh, the default known, you have to go to select the avatar of the imported scene, which is not the root bone, but is the object with, this, with the name Tanya Armature. This is needed because the animation that we will use in the in the remaining of this tutorial will anim in Blender they animate the full armature and not only the bones of the character. So we need to have the Tanya armature as a root node for the avatar uh, for the avatar definition. Apply and this will take a while because the unit is re-importing the Blender scene again. Unfortunately, uh, setting up the importing option of the Unity of the Blender scene uh, requires to uh, re-import again the scene several times. So this uh, can take more or less time according to the power of your computer. Next step, we go to the animation tab, and here we have to configure. Uh, all the settings to import all of the animations. Especially, we we go to the A pose, which is the fake dummy animation with only one keyframe. And uh, what I want to show you is that you have to go down in the panel and check 
for the color of these loop match flags. So normally a loop match means that uh, the animation can loop without creating visual glitches and uh, what we normally do is to select the checkbox to back into pose. Back into pose means that the movement of the character will be applied not to the game object that you see in the scene but will be applied to the uh, objects beneath the main game object in the scene. Essentially this in, especially in, in uh, idle in looping animation will prevent the object to accumulate uh, uh, drift, um, errors in the computation of the offsets and start to have some drifts in space. And we go through all the animations. For example, the idle has to be loopable and we want to prevent that the game object moves in space. For the left turn is loopable because we want to keep on rotating uh, but we have to click only on the root transform position Y so the object uh, will have the possibility to rotate and to translate on the horizontal plane but doesn't have to go up or down we do the same for the right turn loopable and avoid vertical offsets for the salsa it is not loopable we want to have uh, lock the rotation, lock the translation, but in this case we leave the translation of the, on the horizontal axis because our animation is indeed translating the character and we want our character to be free to translate back and forward. The military salute is not loopable, but we prevent translations and rotations walking has to be loopable we lock rotation and uh, vertical movements and finally waving we lock all the transformations once you have done it you apply again and you wait for the import once finished we go to the materials and we see that there are many materials, we have to extract the materials. This is needed because we will need to edit manually some of the materials and this is not possible if the materials stay embedded in the Blender scene. So we have to extract them and we can simply export them in the same directory with the Blender scene. And of course Unity will re-import the Blender scene again. Once imported, you can see that in the same directory, together with the scene, there are the material files. And what you have to do is to open the scene with Blender. You can right click and do open. Because there is one step to do in Blender, which is go to the external data and unpack all into files. This will, this will create a, a new directory with the, the texture. You select the second option write files to current directory once saved you can close blender and if you go to unity a very short import because there is a new directory called textures containing all the textures that we needed to finalize the setting up the materials in unity you have to go from texture to texture if it is a diffuse in this case you disable importing the alpha channel because we don't need it and apply and for each normal maps you have to change the type to normal map and apply we skip opacity and specular we don't use it in this uh, tutorial if you want to have better uh, uh, looking materials you can uh, follow any unity tutorials about how to set up your materials and use them and uh, we continue by configuring only diffuse and normal maps for each of the texture in our scene so there is a texture for each of the separate uh, piece of clothes the, the tops, the bottoms and the shoes and there is also uh, a diffuse and a normal map for the hair. 
we ignore the human female diffusion, human female displacement, because that is already a copy in our Unity package. But we finish by configuring the the hair. We leave the alpha because in the hair, in this case, we use the alpha channel. But for the hair normal again, we change the type to normal mode. And that's all about the configuration of the textures. Once adjusted the texture, we can drag our scene into the scene layout and we see the character appearing at the center of the scene. We see that under the main object, Tanya, which has the same name of the Blender scene, there are the two objects that we see also in the Blender layout, the Tanya armatures and the Tanya body. If we play, the character is grey, because we have to do some work in order to fix the materials. So the first thing we do is we select the body, uh, the mesh of the character, and uh, in the Yala project we've prepared a script called Fix MBLAB Materials and uh, this script does quite some job for us at the moment we start the game. So we add this, uh, this script to the character and then we go to select uh, in our script folder there is a mesh utils folder and there is a subfolder called MBLAB Textures. We have to drag some of these textures in the script configuration. We use the female diffuse as a diffuse map, the displacement as a normal map, and finally we prepared a special texture containing only the eyelashes uh, using alpha channel, and we use this as a third parameter. And if we play, we see that the skin of the character is fixed. What doesn't work yet are the eyelashes and the eyes also are not perfectly configured. So this is something we have to do manually because it is not possible to fix the some parameters of transparency procedurally in Unity. So we have to go to the cornea, set the type to transparent, drag the diffuse to the albedo, and also set the shader type to specular setup. If we play We see the eyes correctly now. And then the four, again standard specular setup, we have to set it to fade in this case. We use the eyelashes texture. And we see now that the eyelashes render correctly using the transparency. And now we can fix also all the materials of the clothes. For each piece of clothes, we have to go to the texture folder that we exported before, and we can drag the diffuse to give color and the normal map to increase the detail. We do the same for the tops. Top diffuse. normal and for the shoes diffuse and normal we just miss the hair again We can change the type of the shader to fade and hair normal. Now if we play, we 
everything works as needed. That's all about uh, how to import the character in Unity. In the next tutorial, we will see how to make this character uh, interactive using the Yala components. Thanks for watching.